What is up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and this is the fourth video that we're doing on JavaScript's arcade solutions, specifically the ECMAScript 6 versions. And the challenge that we are doing today is called Adjacent Elements Product. So let's dive right in. So here we are at the Code Fights website and uh, if you haven't joined yet, the link to joining is in the description below, so be sure to check that out. We're going to head over to, well yeah, we can head over to arcade via this. And we're still in the intro, it's going to take a while before we get through there. But we have upgraded from the journey begins to the edge of the ocean. And a bunch of you have joined since my first video. That's my friend, Night Fury, he's a legend. And then here's another guy, I don't even know, I didn't know Tunisia or however you pronounce that place. It was even a place, but welcome and thanks for joining. Anyway, uh, we're at the edge of the ocean now and we're doing the fourth challenge. So let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are at the fourth challenge, Adjacent Elements Product, and the description is we are given an array of integers. Find the pair of adjacent elements that has the largest product and return that product. Now, adjacent elements is just elements that are next to each other, and product is the result of them being multiplied. So here's an example. For an input array of three, well, the elements are three, six, negative 2, negative 5, 7, and 3, the output should be adjacent elements product with input array that 21. Now the reason for that is, if you can look at the comments over here, if we think about it, 3 times 6 here is 18, 6 times negative 2 is 12, negative 12, negative 2 times negative 5 is 10, negative 5 times negative times normal 7 is 35, and 7 times 3 is 21. Now, out of these, we want to find the largest product and return it. The largest one here is 21. So, we know that now. Let me just start by turning this into an ES6 function because I like to do that and get that out and done with straight away. That's going to be input array. There we go. We're in 2017 now. Awesome. So just a bit of other notes here. We have the input and output. The time limit for this function is four seconds as usual. The input is an integer array, so that means all of these will always be numbers, which makes sense because we're trying to get the product. And the integer array, the length, it will be two elements at least and 10 elements at most. And then the values won't be less than negative 1000 or more than 1000. So that's something to bear in mind. And then we have the largest product of the adjacent elements is what we want to get. So let's start off by setting a, we're going to have a variable that's going to be changeable and we're going to call this the largest product. Now, initially we want to set this to our input array at zero, which is the first element of the array times the input array at one. So that's just technically saying in, in this example here, we're saying over here, three is element zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five. So there's those are the indexes of the array. We want to get the input array index of zero, which is three, times the input array index of one, which is six, just to get our starter elements up and going. What we want to do after that is loop through the array. Well, let me just mention, we're going to loop through the array. And um, after we loop through the array, we're going to always check to see how we can change the largest product. And then we want to return our stuff. Actually, I'm not even going to comment. Never mind. What I want to do at the end is return largest product because that's our goal. So here we're going to loop the array. Now to do that, we will do the following. We're going to make a for loop. And we're going to set let i equal zero. And i is going to be smaller than the input array and i is going to increment each time. So if you're not familiar with for loops, I really highly recommend you check them out. Uh, basically, we start off with this i. It's going to, oh, it's got to go through the input array's length. So it's always going to be smaller than the length because remember the length is going to be six in this case. I'm just using this as an example. And we want the i the last time to run through will be at five because it'll be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now, one thing to bear in mind is we've already got the largest product for the first case. So we can actually start at index one, which is starting here because we already know what's there. 
And another thing to also mention is we only want this to actually go to the second last element because if we go to the last one, how are we going to measure? We'll see this later, but how are we going to measure like the element after the last one? There is no element. So we actually want to get the second last element. So we add negative one in here. Now, what we want to do is we want to check if the product, the product of these elements is larger than the current largest product, then we want to set the new largest product to be that. But let's first write our condition. So if input array at i, example, in this case, the first time at one, uh, times input array at i plus one, so the one after that, is bigger than the largest product. That's quite big there. I wonder if I can make this more space. There we go. Then we want to return the well, we want to set the largest product to equal the input array at i times the input array at i plus 1. I can't even type anymore. So that's basically what happens here. And this is actually our code. It's all running. So what we basically see here is we start at i equals 1. And we loop for the first time. So the first time we check, okay, is 6 bigger than... Uh, or is 6 times uh, the next value, negative 2 times negative 2, is that product bigger than the largest product? Negative 7 bigger than 18? No, it's not. So it goes and does the loop again and doesn't actually run this statement here. But at the end, when it gets to that last product there, we see that that is bigger, so it returns the largest product. I hope you kind of understand what's going here. It's quite complicated if you're not very familiar with looping through arrays, but if you are, then this is pretty straightforward and you're going to have to really get used to this because this is a very common question they ask in interviews. Now, another nice little thing I'd like to do is I'd actually like to simplify this code even more or maybe look a little bit more complicated, but I want to make a function called get product and that's going to take the input array and the current index, which is just, we're gonna set that as i. Oops, I'm not even doing ES6, how shocking. Let me do as ES6. And I wanna return something. All I wanted to do is return something, so I'm not gonna put anything else in there. And basically what I wanna do is, I want to get this over here, and we stick it in here. And now we can replace this long function with just get product we take the two parameters, the input array, and we take i. Because we're doing this twice, so if we're going to do multiple times, why not just put this into a function, because that makes our code a lot cleaner. I hope you kind of understand what's going on here. So now we run this get product, which is literally the same as running this here. You don't need to do this. Our program would have worked before, and I hope it works now, because I don't want to get anything wrong. Yes, everything works. I can submit. And this all works, which is excellent. It's exactly what I wanted to do. So to sum up, we've got our adjacent elements product working perfectly. All our test results are met. Um, here's an example of test four. Input array of one, two, three, zero. Obviously, the biggest number here is going to be six because one times two is two, two times three is six, three times zero is zero. So the biggest one is six, and that's all working perfectly. So what we always do is we just check, hey, is this largest product bigger than the previous one? We go through here, we see 3 times 6, that's 18. Cool, that's the new largest product. Then we go 6 times 12, that's like 6 times 2 is negative 12. That's smaller than 18, so 18 is still the largest product. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10, which is still smaller than 18. So 18 is still the largest product. Negative 5 times 7 is 35, negative 35, sorry. And that is still smaller than 18. But here, 7 times 3 is 21. That is bigger than 18. So suddenly, the largest product becomes the new product. And we return the largest product at the end after the whole loop is run through each of these array cases. That was quite a mouthful, but I hope that kind of explains everything that's going on here. And I hope you get some nice little bonuses on making separating this into a product. Because remember, we have this programming concept of dry, which stands for don't repeat yourself. So whenever you see repetition, try and simplify it by putting it into a function that does it all for you. Now in this case, function doesn't do much. It doesn't make it much smaller. It actually makes the code longer, but it's a lot cleaner. 
So you're just sending things out to doing their own thing. Uh, I highly recommend you do that because, well, it's just a good practice to have. I mean, you could even put this whole thing into a function, but we're not repeating it, so we don't do that. Anyway, guys, as usual, if you liked the video, please click that little sarcastic thumbs up thing. And do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because you'd like to stay up to date. And if you want to stay up to date, you get this little bell thing next to the subscribe button, which is like down there. So I highly recommend you click that as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you keep well and we shall catch you in the next video. Ciao.